All right, we have the legendary 120 Mike to share yeah. <laughs> and his handler today, Susie Gary, to start with. If you want to just kind of summarize your day, what it means to you, to you to be out there today, and Susie, if you want to talk about how good you did. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. So this was my first nationals since 2016, so it's been quite a quite a long spell, and uh, um, I didn't even think that I was gonna actually be here. About a week ago, I hurt my back, and I called Susie on the phone. I was like, I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to withdraw. She's like, well, take take it one day at a time. We'll see what happens. And things were okay, and I was nervous as I could be when we came out to squats and uh, shaking on the way down, which was new. Uh, but then once I got into the bottom, things moved okay. So we just kind of kept going up. We had no idea... Well, not not as clear of an idea as we usually would as far as where we were going to end up. So we were kind of playing that by ear. Um, ended up three for three on squats and pretty happy about that. Uh, bench was on fire. It was feeling really good from training. And I didn't have to think about it very much or anything. It was pretty automatic execution. And uh, went three for three on the bench just right according to plan and for deadlift uh, at that point we kind of could see that it was going to be tight the podium finishes were going to be tight so uh, just trying to stay in the game and see what happens uh, pulled 325 on the opener uh, and that went okay probably moved maybe moved uh, if it moved a bit slow it was because i was being a bit hesitant feeling things out and um, went up on the second attempt to, what was it, 342.5. And um, that was fine, too. Again, just keeping things uh, a little cautious to make sure everything held together. And um, my hamstring was a little weird on the second attempt. Uh, so I was just hoping that it would hold together for the third. Um, we put on what we needed for a silver medal finish. And... Um, after Lugo's third attempt pull got uh, overturned, Susie told me that, you know, this is what counts for the silver medal. So I uh, can't sandbag it now. <laughs> so <laughs> so went out and uh, pulled on it. And I could tell after it left the floor that my hamstring was going to be okay. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun when they're slow enough that you can have a conversation with yourself on the way up. So uh, just keep pulling and... There we go. So nine for nine day, pretty happy about it. I've never been so happy about a silver medal. <laughs> I was just really super proud and excited to work with Mike again. It's been a long time since we've actually worked together. But like you said, a week ago, I said, you know, one, one time I had a back thing where I couldn't even squat the bar. And in a week's time, I was able to come back and, and perform. You never know. I'm like, don't give up hope, but we'll, we'll see. And so every time we talked, he's like, oh, I'm feeling okay. And um, so coming in, we knew it wouldn't be the strongest Mike T ever. But I think we got everything out of him today that we could. Yeah. And, um, you know, being able to pull for second. Like you say, it's pretty awesome because being realistic and knowing, you know, as soon as Tristan came off, his coach said to me, so are you going to put three, 372 on? I looked at him, are you kidding? I said, no, <laughs> not, not that I don't believe it, that he could do it someday, right. just not today. Yeah, so I'm really proud just of how well you performed, but also how you took what you, you know, you took what we knew was there instead of just taking what you wanted to take. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's worth saying, too, like it wouldn't have been in those positions to put those things on the bar without good selection going up to that. Like calling for uh, 325 on the third squat was the right choice. Uh, the bench, you know, we got what we thought we would get, and that's fortunate when that happens. Uh, but if, if we hadn't been in those situations, if we hadn't been in a situation where, you know, Susie knew the rules, she knew she's very experienced handler and coach, uh, we wouldn't have been in the situation to pull uh, for the silver medal anyway. So um, it was definitely a, a team effort. Proud to be part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, here you go. <clears throat> Mike, you're, you're definitely a seasoned veteran of the game. You've been in this sport for a really long time. Um, 
both as a competitor, and then there was a period where you weren't competing, and, and you know, you, you probably uh, made more claim as a coach. Um, you had a lot of Mike T fans in the audience today. Um, yeah. you, you're, you're legendary, and you, you lift the sport up in many ways. How did it feel to be back at a national championships and to be so embraced by the community? Man, how, what a what an awesome experience it was to be here, you know? I mean, the I mentioned that the last Nationals I did was in 2016, and that was not great. That was, uh, you know, came in quite hurt, just take what you can, you know, and it was not a good experience, you know? So I'm glad that I can get back here and, and at least not leave it on that note, you know? And th there's more to do, uh, but at least we put that one behind us and, you know, get to move on from here. And I was super nervous uh, <laughs> coming into it. So since coming back to competing, I've done two other comps and wasn't really nervous for those. This one was, uh, had some nerves going. So it's uh, normal and it's good to see that part come back too, you know. A lot of athletes, especially coming down to placing toward the end of the competition, tend to shy away from the scoreboard. I was back there. I saw you looking at the scoreboard just as much as most of the coaches. Is that just because of your experience as a coach? Are you usually kind of involved in this? Do you have any kind of mental baggage associated with what other competitors might be doing? I have always been a pretty involved lifter. Like, I don't have headphones on, really. Uh, I'm communicating pretty normally with with Susie the whole time uh, I will say though that uh, when we're starting to warm up for uh, third attempt uh, starting to warm up for deadlifts um, I, I said to her like Susie uh, I know it's getting tight and we had a plan but I'm thinking crazy thoughts here maybe <laughs> you know maybe it's time maybe I want to go for it and you're gonna have to see if that's a good idea or not you know <laughs> so <laughs> in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I had crazy thoughts in Arizona going to deadlifts, too. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe this is normal, too, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Other questions? Uh, yeah, it's your, it's your first national meet since 2016. What did it mean for you to be back on the national platform and be ultra-competitive? I did not expect to be... I, I suppose I expected to be on the podium maybe, but I didn't know how close it would be. Uh, I deliberately don't look that much at my competition in the lead up. I think that's a, that's the main source of error that uh, things like social media and stuff like that can bring to mm -hmm. lifters as you start seeing your competition do well and you think I've got to push it more mm -hmm. and start making bad decisions. So it kind of, I lift my lifts. I know that I'm training hard, uh, and I don't need any more encouragement than that, you know. Uh, so I was keeping to myself on on most of the rest of it. Uh, but then once I really the last two months was kind of dinged up, and then about a week out, like I said, I got fairly injured. Uh, so I really had kind of low expectations <laughs> coming into it, uh, but was really happy. Uh, that everything held together. Goal number one was to stay in one piece and got that checked off too. Took a bit of tape, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know you're pretty heavy on data collection. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're healthy, let's rewind to two, three weeks ago or something like that, what kind of performance were you expecting from yourself today? Um, not a whole lot more than what we ended up getting. It would have been nice to have a bit more on the top end of the of the deadlift. Um, the squat, I don't know. We were within range. It wasn't like we were like 20, 30, 40 kilos off. I would say maybe if we could have added 10, 10 and change to each of the lifts, uh, squat and deadlift, that is. That would have been pretty cool. Um, but, yeah. Hmm. Um, tell us about your kind of recent bench technique change and how that's translated to your top end strength. I think 210 matches your best raw meat bench, like best, your raw PR for meats. I think it's close to it, yeah. if, if not there, but yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> you would know, you would know I was just going to say, according to my spreadsheet, too. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. So starting last October, um, I put uh, like a sinking sink bench into my program, mostly as like an assistance exercise. I wanted to just kind of dabble with it. And uh, after a few weeks of training it, it ended up stronger than my uh, light touch bench, which is interesting because I've tried this before and it that hasn't happened. But, you know, when you try it and now it's the stronger style, then that's what you go with. And uh, I've just been kind of developing it since then. There does seem to be kind of a, a sweet spot between sinking enough but not too much and... Um, just something about the last training block, I have feel like I really found the groove on it. Uh, there's, it's hard to explain even, but there's like a certain feeling that's that comes with the position, uh, where the bar is, how my elbows are, how I bring the bar down uh, and, and touch the bar path that you press off the chest with. Like there's just, there's a feeling for all of it. And it was, it had been feeling really good in training, and today it felt just like it did in training. It couldn't have been couldn't have been better. Yeah. On, on the back of that, another technique question. Compared to most deadlifters, you have a pretty unusual deadlift style. Mm -hmm. A lot of knee extension at the start before you kind of get yourself into position. Where did that come from? How do you kind of optimize that? Well, I've got a lot of concerns about the IPF implementing a deadlift depth rule. So it's been <laughs> mostly in preparation for the eventual yeah. deadlift up. No, it, <laughs> um, it goes back a little more than a year. Um, I hurt my back again about a year ago. You know, it was a fairly minor thing, but in the kind of rehab process, I started just using that style because it felt a little more comfortable. But then th again, through that process, it ended up as strong or stronger and it felt better. It felt like a sh like a less at risk position, and so hey, if it's stronger and it just feels better, then go with it. And um, it's fairly unorthodox, but it, hey, if it feels good, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, moving forward, um, I was from this meet uh, going into I guess uh, future training box. Are there any uh, variables, any um, new technical things you think you're going to be working on? Just Based off of meat performance? Based off the meat performance, probably not so much. Um, staying healthy is the biggest thing. And I'm starting to, I feel like I'm starting to uh, zero in on how much, like how much of certain movements can I tolerate. Like I know comp squatting, comp deadlifting, I can only tolerate a certain amount of it, but that's not the whole of my training, like I'll have to find other things that uh, still let me train and, and get better uh, while kind of, you know, paying attention to what can I tolerate on the, the more, uh, more taxing movements, let's say. So it, that's a, a little bit of a back to the drawing board after, after this. I've got some ideas that I want to sketch up, but it'll be mostly around load management for the, for the more taxing movements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you don't put headphones in. You're not a present, like your your mind is present during the entirety of a meet day. Um, I I think that you do practice some amount of self talk. Right? You <laughs> yeah. Give some mantras or things yeah. that you're reminding yourself of. Mm -hmm. well, can you tell us about some of those things if, if you're comfortable? Yeah, I it I suppose it's always a bit different. I'm just kind of talking through the lift. Um, yeah, sometimes there's a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes not so much. And I'm fairly okay with it being being a fluid thing. Like it doesn't, I don't feel like I have to always say the, the same things. Um, like today on the bench, there just wasn't that much. I'm just saying same thing as last time. Like it, from five lifters out, do exactly the same thing as last time. And it went great. There was a lot more on the on the squat and the deadlift. Uh, in particular around like trying to calm my own nerves around uh, uh, my back and everything and um, trying to 
trying to think of something to do to cope with the shaking on the squat uh, negative. That was something that I was hoping that just bracing more would help. It wasn't the brace. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but that was new. The one thing that, uh, you know, as a coach, you often – you see someone go down real nicely and they come up really slow. For me, I was like, if he can make it to the hole, he's going to be fine because <laughs> right. the up was easy. The right. down was the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. um, Mike, I think I heard you in the warm-up room at one point say, after, I think it was after your third day, of like, just, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to, to kind of think, have you talk about how much fun you had today and how much fun you had this weekend. Sure. Um, I suppose there are, I've developed a lot over the years, you know, and I've placed second at meets before, and I've got a bunch of pictures of me sitting on a, standing on a second place podium looking grumpy. And then, you know, a year goes by and I'm not even at the competition, you know. So I know, I feel, I feel like I have better perspective now that I know that this isn't a guaranteed thing and that I, can be on second, the second place podium today. And the only person that that might feel bad to is the second place guy. Everyone else in the room thinks that's awesome. Uh, and, you know, I think the, the intervening years of not being there at all, uh, second place is, uh, I'm happy to be there. I'm, I'm happy to have lifted, to have represented myself well, uh, to show up and do what I do what I can, you know, and it's wasn't a PR day, but those get to be hard to come by and we'll get back to training and we'll put something together. But I was, I was glad to be there today. Well, we were all happy to see you out there too. Thanks. I have one, uh, one last question for, mm -hmm. uh, for Susie. Um, obviously seeing you, people that actually don't get to see how the sausage made in the back. <laughs> 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 Susie bouncing back and forth, back and forth. I mean, you have the opportunity, of course, to work with two living legends at the same time, and they're pretty close together um, you know, throughout the competition. Uh, what is there anything you're doing mentally to make sure that I mean, obviously, different athletes require different type of stimulus, uh, stimuli, rather. Um, are there any any things that are going on in your head to make sure like, I can like, make sure Mike's on this one, I can make sure Ray's on this one, like. Uh, what was going on, you know, I guess with you mentally, just making sure that your guys were up to, up to snuff? And, uh, well, one of the great things is with Ray, we also had David and a couple other people that were helping load weights. And Mike's pretty easy, easy going. He's like, whatever you think, whenever you want me to go. And he just kind of there he's present but he's not like a basket case he's really easy to <laughs> deal good. with uh, believe me i've dealt with people where you have to calm them down every second right. for some reason so um it was nice because it was pretty much just they trust me enough that if i pointed and said you're up then they went or can yeah. i go to the bathroom yes you have eight minutes so <laughs> i mean it's great because the people that i work with um I know every now and then, like with with Ray, I had to reassure him because he was, you know, he was in a lot of pain. And actually, before his last deadlift, I I told him how proud of him I was, how much I loved him, and that if his knee started to hurt really badly, I wanted to let loose of the bar because right. I'm like, it's not worth making it so bad that it's going to be months or surgery or something like that. And I think some people need to have permission to to give up a little sooner. Because um, there were other people saying, no matter what, just keep pulling. Don't stop. Don't stop to him. And I'm like, if it hurts bad, I want you to put that thing down. I'm like, and he's always like, yes, ma'am. So, you know, um, he listened. But so with the two today, it was pretty easy. A little reassuring for Ray when he was, you know, in a lot of pain and just... Uh, Kind of helping Mike realize were... it was okay to be a little nervous because he told me he's nervous. I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's all right. It'll... I think you were talking to me quite a bit to try to keep the nerves. Just of... keep the yeah. nerves, yeah. You, so... would, you would talk to me for a while, but then when I'd we leave, were leave you be. Yeah, one or two lifters out, you would leave. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a good it was a good balance. So it was kind of a almost like talk a little and distract <laughs> yeah. and then let him have his own space because I could tell you were more nervous than sure. I've seen you in a while, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't like I needed to calm him down. Right. No one else maybe would have known, but I know I've known Mike a long time. So sure. I'm like, well, let me just distract him a little. Yeah. It was appreciated. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she was such a pain. I'm never working with her again. No. <laughs> sure.
Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.